everyone, it's Hannah Ross. Welcome back to my channel. So again, I feel like I say this for every video, but this is such a special video. This is my entire minimalist shoe collection. This was an area that took me years and years to finally nail down and really come up with a curated collection. I, like many others, had so many shoes yet I was always missing something. I never had the right shoe for the occasion, and it was only when I found minimalism and started to curate my life and whittle things down that I actually figured out how many shoes I actually needed and what occasions I would be wearing them for. So this is the long-awaited shoe collection video. I thought no better place to film than my entryway at home. So we are here, this is actually where I put on my shoes on this little bench, so I thought that was a sweet little touch. So we are here in the entryway, and I am going to talk about all 12, yes, 12 pairs of shoes that I own. But before I explain every single shoe and show you what they look like on, I am just going to dive a little bit into why I own these shoes, what the categories are. You know the drill if you've been around for any of my wardrobe videos. So shoes are a little bit different, but I still have three categories. And the categories are dressed up, every day and dress down, although the dress down category in this situation is pretty much just workout. I have actually six pairs of shoes in my dressed up category. I only have four in my everyday category and just two in my workout category. So that brings us to a total of 12 and I cannot wait to get started with the first category and that is going to be my everyday shoes. So when it comes to my wardrobe, there's always some sort of factor that I am considering. That could be length of a garment, that could be coverage a garment provides. And in the case of my everyday shoes, what I am thinking about is seasons. So seasonal wear. So I am going to show you my summer, spring, fall, and winter everyday shoe. With regards to color, I actually like to keep some of my shoes bright, the brighter months I find, so summer and spring. And then the other two seasons, fall and winter, I like to keep dark. So without further ado, let's get into my first shoe. It's summertime, so let's kick it off with my summer sandal. All right, these are my Birkenstock Eva sandals. Believe it or not, they have been cleaned. Um, I just wear these to death. Like these are my number one go-to sandal all summer long to the point where I have a Birkenstock tan now, which you will definitely see in the cutaways. Um, it just comes with having a minimalist shoe collection. If I only have one summer shoe, I'm gonna have a Birkenstock tan. So it is what it is. Who's in back to the shoes themselves I absolutely adore these these are the best shoes on planet earth to me um, they're comfortable they can get wet which is huge in the summertime they don't get super hot because they're white they are adjustable I even broke my toe a few years back and it was so great these were the only shoes that I could wear because I could adjust this top piece here they also do provide some level of support seeing that they're Birkenstocks and they are extremely extremely comfortable I can wear these for a five kilometer walk no problem whatsoever I'm not getting blisters they are just so good. It's to the point now where I feel like I actually need a new pair <laughs> because I have worn the soles out of them essentially. Like they don't have that much tread on them anymore and they're getting a little bit slippy, but I'm stubborn when it comes to replacing things. And if they're still working enough, it's really, really hard for me to go out and buy a new pair. Um, so yeah, I adore these sandals. They are my number one, they are my go-to. If you are looking for an everyday summer sandal, the Birkenstock Evas is where it's at. They are worth the hype they are popular for a reason. Now we are moving on to my light colored spring shoe. And those are my sneakers. These are my Nikes. I don't know quite what they're called, but 
just a white sneaker. Um, these ones are actually leather, which I prefer over a material because they're easy to wipe down and they're like still a little bit water resistant for the springtime. I wear these so much. These are just a slip on shoe for me. They go with absolutely everything in the springtime, but they do add a little bit of lightness to an outfit. They are so comfortable. They go with everything in my wardrobe. They're quite low profile. I'm not someone who likes raised tops. Like I'm not a huge fan of like those Converse. They just don't look very good on me and I don't think they're quite as versatile at least on me so i absolutely love these as you can see like these are clean <laughs> these are very clean and they still are extremely worn as with everything in my shoe collection these are truly the only 12 shoes i have so i wear them a lot and most of these shoes are years and years old so these ones are looking a little worse for wear but that being said I still don't feel the need to go out and replace them because the tread is still really good and they still function just fine like they're not breaking down or anything like that the sole is still intact so I'll be keeping these for a little while yet to come and I know that this Nike swoosh isn't the most overt branding, but I still would probably go for just a completely plain white leather sneaker for my next spring shoe. But other than that, I really, really love these. They're fantastic. They're nice and weighty. Um, they're not like a flimsy, a super flimsy fabric shoe. They have a decent amount of support and I feel like I can get away with them in a lot of situations. So these are my spring shoes. So next up are my fall booties. I love them oh so much. These are them. They're just a really classic Chelsea booty. These ones are actually from Little Burgundy. Oh, and by the way, I'm like a size seven and a half to eight. It depends on the shoe, but just by and large, let's just say I'm an eight. So yeah, these are incredible little booties. I absolutely adore them. I get so much use out of them, especially in Canada. They are leather, so similar situation. They have a little bit of water resistant properties, but they also have like a really comfortable ankle. They have like this elasticity, which not only makes it really easy to get your foot in the shoe, but it also makes it really, really comfortable on your ankle to wear. They have a thick sole to the point where I can wear them if the weather is a little bit bad, but they don't have a chunky sole. I am not a fan on me of that like super chunky high heeled sole for two reasons. A, I don't like the look on me personally, and B, I'm quite tall, so I don't actually want to add too, too much height. Uh, so this is just about the, you know, the highest heel that I would go for in a booty. So these ones are a little scuffed and dirty too, even though I have cleaned them, but I have just got so much use out of these over the years. They are so extraordinarily comfortable, like not a blister in sight. They're really good quality and yeah, I, I really like them. Uh, a tip from me to you is with a store like Little Burgundy, if you have a Little Burgundy in the area that you live, I would suggest looking at the house brand shoes first. Typically the quality is really, really good, but you're not paying for that brand name. Similar to makeup, I would suggest going to like the Sephora brand itself, as opposed to some of the other brand names. You can get pretty good quality for a fair price. So. That is where I got these boots and I would probably go back to Little Burgundy and get a really similar pair once these run out in a few years. So yeah, these are them. These are my Chelsea booties and they are my fall go-to boot. Next up, we are still in the everyday category, but we are on the winter season. 
I told you I lived in Canada. It is no joke. We need a proper winter boots here. I promise you that, especially out here on the East Coast. And here they are. These are my Sorel boots that I wear in the winter. Now I love these boots for a lot of reasons and also have a few criticisms of them. Um, I do love them because they are very comfortable and they're very cute in my opinion. I find a lot of winter boots not so cute. <laughs> I find a lot of them look really, really bulky and I didn't want that because again, with a limited amount of shoes and boots that I have, I need everything to be extremely versatile, i.e. these aren't just going out for a walk in a snow boots. They are also heading to a friend's. They could be dressed up a little bit. So I want to have these boots look kind of cute, kind of nice. Um, and they do. I really think they deliver on that front. I think they are a really, really nice boot. But the downside to these are A, they're not as warm as I would need them to be, lesson learned for the next time I buy boots, and B, they're kind of oddly difficult to get on and off. I think because the boot part is so fitted and not as bulky, it's actually really hard to get your foot out of these. So I struggle a little bit putting these on and off and I do kind of find them to be a pain, but overall, other than those two small things, they are a fantastic boot. I really like them and I get so much use out of them in the winter. And quite frankly, like I mentioned, they are just a necessity but they do go with a lot of my clothes. I made sure to have um, winter boots that lace up. That's very common anyways, but I made sure to have them lace up just in case I need to tuck in, you know, a looser pant um, that I'm wearing. I can still absolutely do that. I also wanted them to be cute enough and tight enough on the calf that if I was wearing looser pant, didn't want to tuck it in, I could put them over and almost act like a booty, more similar to my fall boot, but in, you know, worse weather. So these ones also have a little bit of a heel, but not too much. The tread is pretty good. I don't slip too, too much in these. Sorrel does a good job for that. Just a very necessary boot for those cold, cold winter months in Canada. All right, my friends, so that is my first category done. Those were my four everyday shoes for four seasons. Now we are moving on to the next category that I want to talk about, and that is my dressed down or workout category. These I would classify primarily as workout, and I have a completely different system for them. They have nothing to do with seasons whatsoever. For these shoes, I have two pairs, and it's as simple as indoor working out, outdoor working out. So let's start off with my first pair, which are indoor, and here they are. These are my indoor trainers. I would do everything in these. We have a little home gym downstairs. So I would go for a row or I would do a workout program. And if I'm completely honest, my intention was to wear these solely inside, but I actually have worn them outside because they're cute. Like I actually think that they're a really nice looking shoe. So I found myself pairing them with more workout style athleisure outfits outside, which I really shouldn't do, but I have. Sue me. So these are extremely versatile. I absolutely love these shoes. They are so comfortable. I know a lot of people have a lot of problems with Nike and morally I get it, okay? I really, really do. But when it comes to like sports shoes, Nike is truly the only comfortable brand that doesn't hurt my feet. So I have stuck with them until I find a new brand that is equally as comfortable. I probably will be sticking with Nike just because of how good they have been to my feet over the years. Even back in the day in my competitive athlete phase, I was always wearing Nike shoes. They just do the best things for my feet in particular. It's just me. So anyways, long story short, these are my indoor trainers. I absolutely love them and I do sneak them outside every once in a while, shh, don't tell. So these are them, super, super comfy, easy to slip on, easy to slip off. Love having this band to keep everything nice and secure. Here they are, my indoor light colored workout shoes. Next up, uh, just looking at these ones there, nice and dirty. I just wore them for a hike, 
But anyways, these ones are my workout shoes but for the outdoors. These are an outdoor running shoe by Nike as well. They are pretty tight on my foot, which I prefer. I feel really nice and secure. And these shoes I would wear to go for a walk, I would wear it to go for a hike, I would wear it to go for a run, anything in the outdoors. They are water resistant, they are so comfortable, they are just ugh, the perfect shoe for me. And for some reason, I can get away with just one shoe for multiple things in the outdoors. That is how I prefer it. If I was someone who, you know, did a lot of trail running, I might have a specific trail running shoe, but for me, I don't have many like specific outdoor hobbies that these couldn't address. So I just have the one pair for now and I absolutely love them and of course they go with everything i think they even have some reflective capability too yeah i think the nike swoosh is reflective if i'm not mistaken so these are my outdoor workout shoes that i love oh so much now a final caveat to the workout category and it's not an additional pair of shoes but it's more of a concept if you are someone who loves cycling and you need those like snap on biking shoes or if you play basketball and you need basketball high top shoes, or if you do track and field and you need some specific like running shoes, that is all part of this. A minimalist shoe collection or minimalism in general isn't about cutting out those things. I just don't happen to be very involved right now in any of those particular activities, but I have had more basketball shoes than you could shake a stick at. I've had track and field shoes. I've had so many specific designated shoes for certain hobbies. And if those are part of your life and you really enjoy those hobbies, of course you're gonna have a larger shoe collection. My sport category just only has two right now, but if I were ever to get back into something like volleyball perhaps or basketball, I absolutely would add those to my workout category shoes and not worry if my shoe collection has to grow a little bit to adapt to my changing lifestyle. So now we have gone over the everyday shoes and my workout shoe category. That brings us to six shoes. And truly, if you are an extremely minimal person, I feel like you could get away with just these six shoes and maybe like one pair of fancy shoes. But I love dressing up and I find a really easy and simple way to elevate an outfit is through a dressy shoe. So I actually have just as many dressy shoes as I do all of my everyday and all of my workout shoes. So I have six pairs to talk about today and I wear them so much, you will see, trust me. So I have a pretty basic wardrobe. I think we can establish that. I love it, I'm not offended by the word basic. I actually think that's fantastic. I see my wardrobe as a uniform. It's how I prefer to live my life. But that being said, I also am a very dressy person, typically. I would prefer to be overdressed than underdressed. And having six pairs of dressy style shoes makes these outfits just a few notches and more elevated and at least I feel more comfortable going to the events that I'm going to go to. So now I'm going to talk about the factors that I think about in my dressy shoes. Every day was seasonal. Working out, indoor versus outdoor. And now I have a completely different strategy for my dressy shoes as well. So for my dressy shoe category, I am thinking a lot more about color. So I'm having the same shoe in light and dark, similar to the way that I address my wardrobe. But I'm also thinking about closed toe versus open toe, heeled versus not heeled. If I wasn't 5'10", I swear I would wear heels every day. I absolutely love them. Sorry, the sun's coming in and out here. I absolutely love the feeling of wearing heels. And I do wear them very, very frequently, but the odd time, I don't know, sometimes I just feel a little bit too tall in heels and I want to have an option that is flat but dressy. So the first two that I am going to talk about are the same shoe but in light and dark. I am going to show you the light version first, 
These are my Dressy Sandals by Steve Madden. They, as you can see, are open-toed, but they are flat, completely flat. They are that perfect merger between feeling fancy, but not so fancy that you're wearing a heel. I actually really, really love these, and as you can see, they are like quite well worn. Again, I feel like these can go with any, just about anything in my wardrobe, and I really love having a flat, dressy sandal option. So these are them, these are my Steve Madden's, I think these are in a size eight, everything's rubbed off, I've had these for years. Um, but these are like a leather, fancy kind of sandal. I adore them, they go with everything, fantastic. So next up, it's gonna be no surprise to you that I have the exact same shoe, again by Steve Madden, but in a black leather or pleather. And again, I just really like having these. They go with everything in my wardrobe. They are dressy without being too dressy. This is just my opinion, but sometimes because I am tall and I do wear a heel, I feel like it elevates an outfit a lot. And sometimes I just want a minimal amount of elevation. Maybe I'm heading to a brunch. I don't want to wear my Birkenstock sandals and I don't want to wear a full on heel. I go to these sandals. So these are my dressy, dark, open-toed, flat sandals. <laughs> that was a mouthful. But those are truly all the factors that go into me picking my minimalist shoe collection. My second two pairs in my dressy shoe collection are still open-toed, but this time we've got a little bit of a heel going on. So these ones are the light colored version. Oh my goodness, have these ever gotten some use out of the years? These are quite old, absolutely adore them. They are from Le Chateau, which I don't even know if it exists anymore in Canada, but the Le Chateau flex version for shoes was amazing. If it's still around, I really truly hope it is. <laughs> if it's still around, geez, those are some comfortable shoes. So they have a pretty short, wide heel. I need a wide heel. Like, I am Bambi. I will trip and fall over absolutely everything, so I need a chunky heel. Plus I find it's just more versatile, like I can go to an event in the grass and not be like stuck, <laughs> stuck in the grass in those like teeny tiny little thin heels. So. The chunky heel is for me. And these ones just have a little buckle at the top and yeah, they're open toed. They are a fantastic shoe. You also might notice that I have some silver detail here and some gold detail on those flat Steve Maddens. I really don't mind what metal I have on my shoe or what color buttons there are, like these ones are silver. I mix and match my metals. If you've seen my jewelry collection, you will already know that. But it is nice to have one set be silver and one set be gold. But back to the shoes themselves, these are just a pretty versatile shoe. Even though they don't have a heel, it's not too high and I can wear them with a lot of outfits. So I really, really do love these nude colored, open toed, dressy shoes with a heel. Ha <laughs> ha um, going into <laughs> probably my oldest shoes in my collection, ah, that might not be true, but definitely, definitely some of the most worn shoes, point blank. These ones are the exact same as my other pair, but in dark. I have got these resold, I think twice. That's another thing. I would much prefer to resole a shoe and get something repaired than go out and buy a whole new pair. They are looking worse for wear and I do understand that. Um, but they are my beloved dressy open-toed heel shoes. I feel like this heel is the perfect height to feel definitely dressy, but I can still get through a night of dancing. And honestly, if I feel like I'm not gonna be able to get through an entire night in heels, I just bring my flat sandals, those dressy ones I just showed you by Steve Madden. But anyways, I digress. These ones have been through a lot with me. I love these shoes. They are battered and beaten. They've got some marks on them, but certainly still good enough for me. For a heel, I have just never found a shoe that is as comfortable as these guys. And again, these are the Le Chateau 
flex shoe line. Open toe, no heel, light and dark. Open toe, heel, light and dark. Now we are moving to closed toe, heel, light and dark. Let's start it off with these bad boys. These are just your basic nude heels. Trust me, I have tried to minimize my shoe collection even further, especially in the dressed up category range. But there are just situations where I want this closed toe. So I could be going to a winter wedding and, you know, wear a pair of stockings and I would want a closed toe. I could be at the office not feeling comfortable with, you know, an open toed shoe and want to wear a closed toe. So I keep coming back to these three versions and I always want to include just your very classic closed toe shoe with a little bit of a heel. These ones are the exact same as my last pair, i.e. they are the Le Chateau Flex line. So they are extremely comfortable and I have gotten, again, so much use out of the years with these shoes. I think they're really flattering on. You also may have noticed that all my shoes are rounded at the tip. If you are an almond, you know, shape or a pointed tip person, you do you. I have a size eight foot, which actually, seven or eight, which actually isn't too big. It's not a very large foot, but I wouldn't want to further elongate my foot. And that's just how I feel. So I like this like rounded tip look on me, which is why every single one of my shoes has that. Forgot to mention that at the beginning. But yeah, these are my classic closed toed dressed up shoes with a heel in the light color. And now moving on to my final pair of shoes to talk about in my entire collection. And if you are paying attention, you now know that these are my dressed up shoes with a heel in black and closed toe. These rival the open toed heels for use. I wore these to death when I had an office job. I wore heels, I would say like 95% of the time in my old office job, and I loved these heels as my go-to. Also, in general, for the dressed up shoe category, I get a little bit more use out of the dark than the light. That's not to say I don't wear the light, I actually do fairly frequently, but for some reason, dark gets a little bit more wear out of me, so that's why these ones are <laughs> if it's possible, even more scuffed than the light version I just showed you. They are like a very basic go-to dressed up shoe that goes with, quite frankly, almost everything except the workout gear in my closet. So that is it. These are the final pair of shoes that I have to talk about today. And that means that I have rounded out my dressy shoes and I got away with six pairs of dressed up shoes to meet all of those needs. So as with every video on my channel, I truly hope that this made you see your shoes a little bit differently, see where you might have some gaps in your collection, see where you might have an absolute excess and you could minimize. And I have said this before, but I'm gonna say it again. If you are someone who never wears dressy shoes, then don't have a dressed up shoe category. If you are someone who does not live in a climate where you need a pair of winter boots, don't have winter boots. If you are someone who has a lot of different sports that you love to play that need a lot of specific shoes, have a much bigger collection of workout shoes. This is all adaptable to your needs. I just want to get you thinking about it and you clicked on this video so you're already interested in this sort of content, right? So I'm just trying to get you to think about your shoe collection, about really anything in your life in a different way. The whole point is the, you know, five, seven years that I have been curating these collections and thinking about all these things. I want to impart that onto my audience. That's my that's my whole purpose here, is to try to get you to a place where you are happy with your shoe collection in this case, but just happy with this stuff coming into your life and or leaving your life. Because remember, we are in control of our stuff. Our stuff is not in control of us. 
So I really hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you enjoyed, you know, the new little setup. It truly feels like such a special privilege to be able to be filming from home for you here in Canada. So if you like this video and you like my shoe collection, please give it a like. If you like me and you like my content in general, please consider subscribing. I am getting on the road to a thousand subscribers, which of course you know means monetization. And if I get to that point, all it's going to be able to do is allow me to make more and more content, more and more videos at a higher quality for you all. Well, my friends, thank you so, so much for spending even a small part of your day here with me on my channel. And I really hope to catch you in my next minimalism video. Bye.